Welcome to the Foundational Gifts Inspirational Podcast, hosted by author, speaker, and life strategist, Nicole Kurtzie. Nicole offers her spiritual gifts to encourage us all to live boldly and to fan the flame of God's gift in us. For the next 15 minutes, enjoy this infusion of spiritual strength and practical action. Hola, 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 and welcome back to the Foundational Gift Show here on the CWA Radio Network. I'm your host, Coach Nicole Kirksey. Follow me on Twitter at Coach Nicole and visit our Facebook page at Foundational Gifts. So we are in our self-improvement series uh, that we are in September. September is Self-Improvement Month, and here on Foundational Gifts, we will be discussing ways that we as believers can work to incorporate or cooperate rather with the spirit of God and his holy word to improve our ways and improve our lives. We really want to live the abundant life that Christ died for us to live. And we want to fulfill the calling of God on our lives for ministry and for service, which is our mission focus here on our podcast. So the first installment of our self improvement series was last week. And we talked about self improvement, through the eyes of Christ followers. Now as Christians, we know that God does all of the heavy lifting, as I call it, in terms of helping us to improve in every area of our lives. The way that we think, the way that we behave, how we spend our energy and our time, and as we talked about on our introductory show, uh, how we fulfill the great commission of extending God's word and sharing it with other people, and how we fulfill the great commandment of loving God and others to the best of our abilities. God really does the heavy, lift, the heavy lifting, the spirit of God in us does that. And God helps us to do these things, but we have to agree and we have to participate. So today we'll be talking about self-improvement in terms of our mentality, what it is that we think and how we think. And the article that we are using to guide us through this series is called Week by Week Guide, How to Celebrate Self-Improvement Month. The article is by Courtney Erickson. And as always, the link to the article is on the show description page. So the first thing that we want to celebrate and focus on during Self-Improvement Month is our mental well-being and the condition of our thoughts. So in this article, the author encourages us to consider how it is we think about ourselves. Now, when we begin to think better thoughts toward ourselves, we improve our overall sense of well-being. Remember, the goal of Self-Improvement Month is really to get a better sense of well-being. We want to live this abundant life, this have this sense of wholeness uh, and wellness that Christ died for us to have. And we can improve our thoughts that we have towards ourselves if we participate in a process that's outlined uh, in this article, but mostly that we see in Scripture in the Bible. So on the surface, this notion of thinking better thoughts towards ourselves may sound like, you know, some self-help, some mumbo jumbo, or a focus on natural things. But the Bible, however, encourages us to line our thinking up with God's thinking. How we think and what it is we're thinking about really does matter. Now, our foundational passage for this series is Psalm chapter 139, verses 23 and 24. And in the New Living Translation, it says this. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything, anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life life. Again, that's Psalm 139 verses 23 through 24 in the New Living Translation. That's uh, King David praying to God and asking God to search him, to know his heart, to test him, to, to, to minister to him about his own thoughts, to point out the things that God finds displeasing to himself about David, and to lead David along the everlasting path, the path of obedience, the path of strong relationship with God, the path of living out his calling and his purpose. God, uh, King David is submitting himself, fu himself fully to the calling of God on his life for ministry and for service, and he's asking God uh, to straighten him out, if you will. And so when David sought to build relationship with God and to obey the Lord, the first thing he asked God was to check his thinking, to check his anxious thoughts. 
Now, the place of offense to God would not first be in the things that David was necessarily doing, but the place of offense to God would be in the condition of his heart and in the condition of David's thoughts in his mind. And these two things, the heart and the thoughts, are connected to each other. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we work to allow the Spirit of God to move in us and to help us to improve in every, every area of our lives. The first thing that we need to do is to allow God to take an inventory of what is happening in our mind, in our thought life. So we may be inclined to say, oh no, it's really about the condition of our hearts that matters most. Well, Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says that what a person is thinking with their minds determines who they truly are because it affects their heart. Now we can be as sweet as pie with whatever it is that we're doing and how it is that we're acting and, and nobody would necessarily know the difference. But when our thinking on the inside in our head is not lined up with our behavior, then the true condition of our hearts actually lines up with our minds and not with what it is that we're doing. So in order to improve in terms of becoming more Christ-like and turning and in, in terms of changing our heart, which is deceitful above all things, the condition of our thoughts are really foundational. And certainly how it is, how we think and what we think also impacts our overall mental wellness, right? That sense of wholeness and completeness and living abundantly. How it is and what we thought think does matter. Now, the United States Department of Health and Human Services Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. That's a mouthful. It's called SAMHSA for short. SAMHSA has developed a wellness initiative. In this initiative, it uh, addresses disparities between people who have mental health and substance abuse issues on the one hand, uh, and the disparities between that group and the general population on the other hand, and there are differences. Disparities means um, uh, differences in access, um, in opportunities. Uh, it's a disadvantage, really. And so people who who face mental health and substance abuse challenges are more likely to die earlier than other people are due to the problems that they have. And these problems are preventable and they're treatable. Um, but when they don't have access uh, to that treatment, then that is what contributes to that disparity uh, in death rates. And there are many benefits to having an overall sense of well-being. And there are actions that we can all take to improve the quality of our lives. We don't have to be addicted to drugs or have a diagnosed mental illness for this to really matter. It does. Wellness is definitely a strong foundation of living that abundant life in Christ. So no matter what state of health or wellness we are in, we can always cooperate with God and with the wisdom that he's given us in the medical establishment and uh, with the wisdom that he's given us in the Bible to help us improve our wellness. Now, the eight dimension, dimensions of wellness that SAMHSA has identified uh, under its wellness initiative, and I put a link to that in our show description page, uh, two of these eight dimensions pertain specifically to mental health or mil mental wellness, if you will. And the, one is dimension number one, is, which is emotional health. Emotional health addresses our ability to cope with the cares of life. Right. So if we're not coping well with the cares of life, certainly we're under mental stress and emotional stress as well. So that's dimension one of eight. And then there's dimension four of eight, which talks about intellectual health, um, a term that we don't talk about very often in the vernacular. What is intellectual health? Um, and that means that we are encouraged to find new and exciting ways to express the creativity, the knowledge and the skill that each of us has. Now we focus a lot on these eight dimensions of wellness here on the Foundational Gift Show and a link to the SAMHSA page as I mentioned is provided in the show description page so you can learn more about all eight of these dimensions. But our emotional health, health and our ability to cope with life and our intellectual health, right, which is using all of the assets that God has placed in our lives. Um, our faith is an asset. Our values our assets, the drive and devotion and the passions we have, that's an asset. Our abilities, our talents, our strengths, that's an asset. Um, how we deal with conflict is really an asset. It's something unique to us. How we um, lead other people is an asset. Our personal experiences are unique to us and those are assets that God has given us. Our personality, our temperament, 
uh, our way that we interact with each other, that's an asset, and certainly uh, our spiritual gifts, which is the center of what we do here. All of these things are assets that God has given us. And he's placed these things in our lives for his glory and for our good. These benefits are all connected to each other. Now, Romans chapter 12, verse 2 in the New Living Translation says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person, into a whole new person. How's he going to do that? The Bible says it's by changing the way you think. God changes the way we think. Think. And when he changes the way we think, he transforms us into new people. And this is not only an event that happens at salvation, but this is a process that happens to us as we walk as disciples in Christ. The Bible says then, to the, continuing on in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Then you will learn to know God's will for you. When God changes the way you think, then you will know God's will for you. And God's will is good and pleasing and perfect. So at the very least, we want to change the way we think because we do want to know God's will and we want to know that good and pleasing and perfect will that he has for us. So even before we can fulfill the calling of God on our lives for ministry and for service, we have to be in the practice of allowing God in the practice, the ongoing practice of allowing God to transform us from who we used to be to our next levels in him, right? And it's not about being bad or good or even better or worse, it's being closer to the way that God wants us to be, his perfect will in our lives. And he does this. God does this. In effect, he helps us to improve ourselves or he helps us to experience self-improvement by changing the way that we think, what's happening for us mentally. And this change not only means changing what it is that we think, right, the content of our thoughts, but it also really means changing from the foundation how it is that we think. How do we process information? How it is that we focus on things? How it is that we make decisions? The process around thinking, not just the content of what we think. And I share this with my adult learners, um, a college instructor, and I talk to them always about the concept of critical thinking. And a very easy definition of critical thinking is thinking about what you're thinking about. You know, why do you think what you think? How is your thinking different now than it has been in the past? What information do you have now that might be changing your way of thinking and changing your results? I mean, really getting into the deep of our thoughts and how these impact us is one way to truly self-improve in the area of thinking and of mental health. So what can we do? What can we do? The article recommends a few things. The first thing the article recommends is to consider how we feel towards ourselves. How do we feel towards ourselves? Now, as Christians, we might want to push against that and say, we, sh- you know, we shouldn't be thinking about ourselves. We should put ourselves last. We should, you know, all the things we tell ourselves. But what we think about ourselves really does matter. The question is, do we hold ourselves in a positive regard or are we frequently down on ourselves? Remember that Psalm verse 139 tells us that God's thoughts towards us are precious and they are so numerous that they can't be counted and that God is always with us. So if God thinks positively toward us, we should think positively toward ourselves as well. Now, of course, our self-assessment of where we are on whatever indicator we're taking a look at should be fair, right? We shouldn't think more highly of ourselves than we should, as Romans 12 verse 3 admonishes us not to do. Don't do that. But really think about it. How hard is that? We all have our blind spots for sure. So sometimes we think we're doing great. We're not necessarily doing it. But overall, when we're in Christ, we're taught humility And really the word of God when we're in it is a mirror and it shows us many areas that can be improved. And we have to have enough care and consideration and real respect for ourselves and the value that God has placed on us in order to want to even improve and to be more like him. Because the flip side of that is if we don't regard ourselves positively, if we don't have enough hope that we can be changed in Christ, that we are just these completely lost causes, we are never going to improve. We're never going to strengthen. We're never going to feel that sense of wellness that Christ died that we could, so that we can have. So it has to be this balance where we do have positive regard toward ourselves. 
Now, the way that the article encourages us to improve our thoughts towards ourselves is to first forgive ourselves. Now, this is a secular article. To my knowledge, the, the author is not necessarily Christian. The article isn't even written from a Christian perspective. And yet here it is for us to first forgive ourselves, a fundamental biblical principle. Forgiveness is the way that we build relationship. God says if we won't forgive other people, he's not going to forgive us. That he, so much, that he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe on him would not perish, but would have everlasting life because he forgave us of our sins. And we have to accept and receive that. That's how we build relationship with God. If we can't accept and receive what God is giving us, then we hamper our relationship with him. And the Bible tells us to repent or turn away from sin and to ask for forgiveness from others. We're to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So by extension, we can't really forgive other people if we hold the grudge towards ourselves, right? Love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Paul says that, you know, no man ever hated himself, but we get down on ourselves for sure. And if we can't give ourselves a break, we don't give each other a break either. Now, a few Bible verses can help us here. And one of them is Philippians chapter three, verse 13, in which says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Forget what we've done in the past. Look forward to what lies ahead. It's better. That's one way for us to have regard, better regard for ourselves. Philippians chapter four, verse eight says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. No matter how small, we might be really down our, ourselves, but if there's any little bit of excellence, any little bit worthy of praise, something that we've done right, a, a right thought, a right action, a right posture towards God. Think about these things. Hold ourselves in some positive regard. And then the third passage is Romans uh, chapter 8 verse 1, which says, there is now therefore no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, we cannot condemn ourselves and stay down on ourselves and then expect to be mentally and emotionally healthy. We can't do it. So the article says this. I'm going to quote from the article. It says, don't hold a grudge against yourself because you are not mother of the year or wife of the decade. Don't beat yourself up for things you may have done in the past that you regret. Let things go. Move forward with your life. Each day, think about the good things you have accomplished. And especially don't worry about anything you can't control. Now that's the end of the quote. And all of the passages of scripture I just read said something to that, you know, that quote, that quote spoke to the scriptures. The scripture spoke to that quote. We can't beat ourselves up about things we've done in the past. We got to move forward. Um, we got to think about the good things we've accomplished. We can't worry about what we can't control. Got to look ahead. So that's one way that we can build up our mental wellness, if you will. So the first way the article says that we can improve our thinking is by forgiving ourselves. And the second way that we can experience self-improvement and build mental health and mental wellness is by being grateful. And there are so many Bible verses about being grateful to God and thankful for everything that he's done. Uh, Psalm chapter 118 verse 24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What day? This day, whatever day we're in. It's the day he's made. Let us rejoice in that. Uh, so we have plenty to be grateful for each and every day. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in all circumstances. Uh, I think uh, verse 5 or 17 says, pray without ceasing. So staying in that constant communication with God and constantly being grateful, having a sense of gratitude, no matter how bad things may feel at the time, is what God wants you to do. 
with the power of Christ living in you. You can't do it in your own strength. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? And then another verse is Psalm 107, verse 1. It says, Oh, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks. Be grateful, because God is good. Even though our circumstances, our situation, our status may not be what we want it to be, God is still good. And his love is forever. And we are passing through whatever trouble we're going through. And that's something to be thankful for. So these are just a few verses to help us to stay grateful and thankful. And we say that we're thankful to God and grateful for who he is and all he's done. But are we truly, if we're struggling with our mental wellness? Now when I talk about mental health, I'm not talking about a diagnosable illness. I'm talking about just a general state of wellness for people who are otherwise healthy. Now the article says that gratitude is one of the best remedies for improving your mentality and attitude toward yourself and those around you. It says each day make a list of three or more things for which you are grateful. And after doing this for some time, you will begin to notice things that you've never noticed before and you will begin to see the tender mercies in your life. That's the end of the quote of the article. Now why would the article use this phrase tender mercies? That's not something we use in everyday language. But the Bible says in Psalm uh, 25 verse 6 in the New King James Version it says remember O Lord your tender mercies and your loving kindness for they are from of old. So this is a prayer to the Lord to remember how tender and kind you are because you've always been that way. Now, when we think about God in that way, it's easy to be grateful that he is a good God. He could have been any kind of God he wanted to be, but he is a tender and a merciful and a loving and kind God. And he's always been that way. And that is something to be grateful for. Uh, And we too have to remember that God is has tender mercies toward us in our own individual lives. And so keeping a, a, gra- a grateful posture towards the blessing that God bestows on us and what he allows us to experience in this one life that we have to live is one way to really stay mentally healthy and strong and well and to improve our emotional disposition as well if we're struggling in that area. Now, a great Christian and scientific source of information on the power of thoughts and their relationship to health is cognitive neuroscientist, Dr. Caroline Leaf. She's the author of the book, Toxic Thoughts, and I will place a link to her website, drleaf.com, on the show description page. And I learned about Dr. Leaf from Joyce Meyer. If you've ever watched her a television show, she's had Dr. Caroline Leaf on many times. And, um, Um, Joyce Meyer has a couple of books on thoughts. Uh, I think her more recent one is called Power Thoughts, Um, but her classic work is called Battlefield of the Mind, Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind. If you really want to delve into the Word of God and how important it is for us to Uh, be conscious of and take control of our thoughts and allow God really to take control of our thoughts and how we're thinking and line our thinking up with the word of God and the benefits uh, of our wellness and experience wellness there. Uh, That's a great book by Joyce Meyer and I will also put a link to that to Amazon uh, and our show description page. So what in self-improvement month are you willing to work on to improve your thoughts in terms of uh, your mental wellness? Are you really ready to experience an improvement in the quality of your mental wellness longer term? So definitely tweet me at Coach Nicole or post on our Facebook page at Foundational Gifts and let me know how it's going. So that is our show for today. Be sure to join us here at 10 a.m. Eastern each Thursday here on the CWA Radio Network. And until next time, You have been listening to Foundational Gifts, where Nicole Kirksey shares ideas to help move you upward and forward into your next level. Be sure to join us in our online community at the Foundational Gifts page on Facebook to continue in this journey of bold living.